we need to tell you this. This is our lead story. Something just happened that looks like a scene out of the right stuff. To the heart of human space flight at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where just hours ago, this on your screen happened. NASA introduced the next generation of American astronauts. Now, the men and women on your screen are going to be the first to fly to the International Space Station aboard private rockets. Who gets the nod to get the astronauts there? Turns out it's SpaceX, yes, run by Elon Musk of Tesla, and aerospace giant Boeing. It's been more than seven years since the last space shuttle, that was the Atlantis, launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. That marked the last time Americans were carried into space by American rockets. Well, now, thanks to a new generation of what, what I call space cowboys, these are entrepreneurs like Elon Musk of SpaceX, Jeff Bezos of Blue Origin, Sir Richard Branson, he runs Galactic Virgin Galactic, and Bigelow Aerospace's Bob Bigelow. We will get to see if private industry can restart the space race and do it better and faster than the government did. Jeff Locke is in Chicago, the home of Boeing, on the money to be made in this new industry and whether, I guess, Jeff, we eventually see the space force that President Trump has talked about get folded in here. I think that could happen at some point. I applaud you for making this lead story, Liz, because I think it is a huge story. It is what they call today a new era in U.S. space travel. Uh, you know, back in 1966, at the height of U.S. spending on this, we spent almost 5 percent of our budget on space travel and on NASA. Now we spend less than a half a percent. But as you report, can we do it better now? Well, today they announced the, the, the four crews, uh, four two-man crews, two-person crews, I should say, because they're not all men, uh, that will now go into space again from a U.S. launched rocket, a, a commercial rocket. Let's listen to these folks who are very excited about what's coming in U.S. space travel. The astronauts. Being able to launch uh, to the International Space Station from U.S. soil, I can't imagine a better honor, and, uh, and we're ready. We're grateful that the next vehicle that we're going to fly on is going to be uh, a little bit more automated, have uh, quite a bit less switches, and uh, doesn't put us up to trying to double check each other. It's like a glass cockpit. It's like flying an iPhone, right? It's, it is absolutely like uh, flying the iPhone. Well, if it's flying the iPhone, I, I guess we could all do it. Uh, I, I'm not sure. It's no, no more spam in a can like in John Glenn's day. Uh, <clears throat> you mentioned the president's Space Force. This becomes not only interesting from a, the standpoint of commercial involvement, but also strategically. Uh, you may know that the Chinese are now planning a mission this year to the dark side of the moon going up there with the Pink Floyd, I think. But this is an unexplored area of the moon. What they've done is they've actually made an agreement with Argentina to put a huge satellite uh, tracking antenna in Argentina, in Patagonia. Uh, and some have questioned, hey, is this a way for the Chinese to gain a foothold in Latin America and perhaps do some spying, whatever, uh, and perhaps get a foothold and take the lead in the space race? Well, at this point, we don't know, but the president, with his space force, intends to make sure the U.S. is wherever it needs to be when it comes to space. What I find interesting, Jeff, is that guys like Jeff, uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, but he loves rocketry, he loves space. He is pouring tons of money into this, not to mention exactly. Elon of SpaceX and then uh, Sir Richard Branson of Virgin Galactic. They're all the carriers. Once they get up there, there really is only one place to go, and that's the International Space Station, but that's where... Bob Bigelow comes in. I've been out to his operation in Las Vegas. Yeah. He's already tested these things. They're, they're inflatable space habitats. One of them's flying up in space right now. It's called the Genesis. Uh, they, it's sort of lopsided here. You've got Bob, uh, who's got NASA on his side, but he's the only one sort of giving these guys places to go once the space station isn't really available. Well, I know the Bezos, the, uh, the Blue Origin, and we, I was in the Blue Origin last year at the Oshkosh Air Show, and that is the, the vision is to take people up into space, but then, of course, bring them back down. It's basically a bit of a joyride, but you're absolutely right. The notion of living in space and somehow, uh, you know, uh, God knows what's going to happen. You know, they talk about Mars and finding evidence of water on Mars. Who knows where this goes? I think this is huge. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's a frontier. I mean, just like... When we explored yeah. west to the uh, Louisiana Purchase and out west <laughs> yeah. and the gold rush. I mean, it's that same kind of feeling, really. I know, I know. Only now. We'll see. We'll see. And, of course, the president wants to move forward with that Space Force. We'll be watching it. Jeff, thank you very much.